Welcome to the Versailles Public Library. Uh, we are um, showing an exhibition about uh, the Count of Artois Cabinet of Curiosities, which was constituted for the instruction of his sons, the Duke of Angoulême and the Duke of Berry. It is an amazing collection which um, had um, specimens from natural history, instruments of physics and chemistry, but above all an amazing collection of objects from all over the world, which are, for most of them, the most ancient ones preserved nowadays. It is also a collection very interesting because it shows the presence of French colonial powers over the world at that time, in the 17th and 18th century. So you've got objects from North America, from South America, from the Caribbean, from Senegal, from the Indies and from uh, the Ile de la Réunion. The exhibition takes place in the former Ministry of Foreign Affairs and of the Navy and most especially in the gallery where the ambassadors came and where treaties were negotiated. All the paintings in this gallery show the parts played by France in Europe and in the world at these times. So it echoes perfectly the items that we show in this exhibition. This exhibition is done within the research projects on the Royal Collections from North America, which was uh, started by the Musée du Quai Branly. It is a project that um, studies the important collections of objects gathered in the 17th, 18th and 19th century in the present territories of Canada and the United States. This exhibition associates the Musée du Quai Branly, the Public Library of Versailles and the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. This great nation from the southeast of the United States was one of the main French allies in Louisiana in the 18th century. And members of the tribe take the floor to speak about the collections from their territory held here in France and to explain their relation with France in the past and present times. The partnership between Choctaw Nation and the Musée du Quai Branly started in 2017 as we were researching Choctaw items that had gone to France during the time of colonial Louisiana. From these exchanges, a collaborative exhibit was proposed. The Choctaw Nation primarily worked on the selection and interpretation of items through exhibit panels and text in the final room of the exhibit to present to the French public. It presents a view of Louisiana in the 1700s from the perspective of indigenous people. Working with the museum and library teams has been a wonderful experience for us. We are very thankful for their hard work to make this collaboration so successful, even at a distance. The Count of Artois was the younger brother of Louis XVI. He is known in history for his strong friendship with Marie-Antoinette, in 1773, he marries Marie-Thérèse de Savoie, with whom he will have four children. In 1780, a military, the Marquis de Serran, was asked to become the governor of the young princes. So he will be the one that will start the cabinet of curiosities. In 1785, Serran asks uh, Denis-Jacques Fayol, a commissar from the Marine, to sell to Condartois his amazing collection of natural history uh, specimens. Fayol was an incredible amateur of natural history and he had gathered these collections from all over the world thanks to his position in the marine and to uh, his familiar network who also worked in uh, the marine. So Fayol accepts to uh, sell the collection and he becomes the curator of the newly found uh, cabinet of curiosities of Comte d'Artois. So Fayol will acquire for the Comte d'Artois a very important set of ethnographic objects from all over the world. That's, that is to say objects that show how people live uh, far away, 
and uh, his collection is listed in an inventory of 1792 which is a precious document because it allows us to know where the objects uh, come and um, some objects are very precisely named it is the case of this uh, kayak which is said to be very secure and never sink and the object is uh, precisely named and we can recognize it because it's still preserves its label from the 18th century. This object is also very interesting for what it tells about collectionism and how people were looking for objects coming from far away. Uh, it is a kayak that has not been done but by an Inuit, by a uh, native people. It has been done by a European since the norms of the boat are not the ones that Inuit use. So it is much larger than it should be and uh, it is represented with two paddles. Instead you usually uh, use a kayak with a single paddle. The collection of the Comte d'Artois had three wax heads that you can see here, they are preserved and they are really very rare specimens. Um, they are done with wax and uh, glass eyes and uh, also hair and uh, they are very well described in the inventory of the collection. So we know that this is a portrait from a woman from Cayenne in uh, uh, Guyana today. Uh, this is a portrait from a man from Louisiana and the third head is a portrait from a man uh, from Canada. This third head was integrated with a painter's mannequin and dressed up like a Canadian. It is a very good example of what people used to do in the cabinets of curiosity. It was very common to have mannequins dressed up to show fashion in other parts of the world. Denis Jacques Fayol played a very important role in the constitution of the uh, cabinet of Comte d'Artois. Uh, he also played a, role, a very important role for the preservation of the collection after the revolution. He was an amateur of naturalia and he had gathered this incredible collection of natural history uh, specimens. For a long time, researchers, scholars thought that the ethnographic collection of Comte d'Artois came from Fayol's private collection. Collections. But we now understand that this could not be possible because the collection integrates pieces that are really exceptional like uh, 18 heights from North America. Those were uh, diplomatic objects of very high prestige that were very expensive too. So an amateur like Fayol couldn't have uh, afforded it. Uh, we think thus that uh, Comte d'Artois probably relied partly on the collections from the um, cabinet of curiosities of the King of Kings of France to uh, increase his collection. We are here in the second room of the exhibition where we present a selection of objects that account for the great variety of provenience of uh, the collection of Comte d'Artois. You have, uh, for example, objects from Guyana, uh, figurines from uh, India. The collection also has pre-Columbian ceramics from Peru and a wide range of objects from uh, North America, Africa and Oceania also. So most of these objects are of very high quality, their manufacture is really exceptional and they seem not to have been used. So they were probably uh, done exclusively for exchange. This shows that most of the objects were obtained uh, by French people uh, through diplomatic and commercial exchanges. So you can see here uh, an example of the very famous pipe tomahawk, which is an hybrid object that combines uh, the pipe used for smoking tobacco with a club. Uh, it is an object that is very uh, particular because it was done by French people to be offered to their allies in North America. It is an object that was really a prestigious item and it bears its date of manufacture. Uh, it was done in 1763. One of the most important sets of objects in the cabinet of Comte d'Artois was um, the collection of 18 hides from North America from the plains. Uh, these 
Objects are items of very high prestige that were done for the chiefs and the important warriors. So these objects are done with a lot of care, with very good materials. And the one you see here is decorated with calumet pipes. In the plains it was uh, common to uh, smoke together to uh, reinforce friendship ties. So French people adopted this custom in their relations with the nations of uh, North American plains. This mask is attributed to the Diola people in uh, Senegal. It dates from the 18th century. It is an initiation uh, mask. Its uh, bumbled forehead recalls the strength of the bull. It's a very ancient object that can be documented by the narratives of people traveling to Africa at the same period. So you see here, for example, the travel account of François Froger, who describes this initiation rite, and he also offers a drawing presenting a young man wearing this type of mask. These masks are still produced nowadays and uh, they are quite similar to the one from the 18th century. The object was listed in the inventory of the collection at the beginning of the 19th century as a hunting mask from Louisiana, but it was later attributed to Africa. We are here in the third room, which is about uh, the cabinet of curiosities during the French Revolution, the Consulat and the Empire, the first empire. In 1789, due to the French Revolution, the Count of Artois and the Marquis de Serran had to emigrate and their collection was confiscated for the benefit of the nation. But Fayol remained the curator of the cabinet, so he had to preserve the collection and uh, he continued uh, to add new items to it. In 1797, the collection was transferred to the Palace of Versailles, which was then the main repository for the collections seized during the revolution for the Department of Seine-et-Oise. And it was added to the Musée Central des Arts, which was inaugurated uh, the previous year. Then, in 1806, two years after Fayol's death, uh, the collection was split. The natural history items went to Versailles High School and the ethnographic objects went to the library. The story of the cabinet of Comte d'Artois is in many aspects very similar to the ones of the constitution of museums in France. It shows how during the revolution and the years that followed, politicians, administrators, curators fought to save uh, works of art and science that were threatened of destruction. This is the fourth room uh, which evokes uh, the Cabinet of Curiosities during the 19th century and the first uh, 20th century. Eight photographic views dated from the 1920s show the display of the Cabinet of Curiosities when it was in the library. It was opened to the public in the 1860s. Uh, Joseph Adrien Leroy, the director of the library, wanted to show this Cabinet of Curiosities and made a catalogue of the curiosities and works of art of the library. A lot of donators continued to enrich the cabinets uh, during the second half of the 19th century. Uh, for example, people who were working for the Navy, uh, missionaries or members of learned societies. Among the objects which were given to the library in the second half of the 19th century, there was a kappa which is a clothes made of bark and in this case probably belt for man. It was given by Victor Touchard, who worked for the Navy and who lived in Versailles. He brought it back from Hawaii during one of his first journeys in the 1830s.
We are here in the last and fifth room of the exhibition where members of the Choctaw Nation have uh, contributed to the presentation of the objects that come from their original territories. So this collaboration started with the study of the objects and we later wanted to share all we had got through this dialogue between French and Choctaw partners to the French public. You see here uh, incredible objects like uh, moccasins done with bear paws or a quiver done with the skin of a, a garfish. Also a beautiful headdress which is one of the oldest preserved for the region of the plains. The Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma is an indigenous nation of more than 200,000 people located in southeastern Oklahoma. Our original homelands are in Mississippi and Alabama in the southeastern United States from which we were forcibly removed in the 19th century. During the period of French Louisiana, Choctaws and French people were allies. We saw French people as our brothers with whom we exchanged trade goods and knowledge about the land. Choctaw and French people also intermarried. Because of these exchanges, many Choctaws bear French family names, which we see as common Choctaw family names. We also use words like chapeau for hat, which is pronounced in French and Choctaw the same way. And the names of places in the Southeast are connected to stories of our shared history. Objects in museum collections can be used to connect indigenous people to ancestors and to their past ways of living, which have changed due to centuries of colonialism. These items can revive interest in time periods of our history and show the diversity of Choctaw people and arts over time. The headdress in the exhibit tells a rich history of the relationship between Choctaw leaders and our relationships with other nations in the past. Our artists use items like these to create new Choctaw arts based on older pieces. These are like conversations across generations in the past between the artists who made them before and the artists working today. One Choctaw artist, Les Williston, made a headdress in 2019 for the Choctaw Cultural Center based on the headdress from the Musée du Quai Branly. So we want to thank the members of the Choctaw Nation of uh, Oklahoma for their participation to this exhibition project. And we wish this film will allow people that cannot travel to Versailles to discover the history of this incredible collection. <laughs>